Hello and welcome to the Zero Function Podcast. I am your host today, Connell, and I am joined by my co-host, Genevieve and Lee. And today we are going to talk about cryptids or stuff along that line, I guess. You know what, you know what they say about Bigfoot? Yes. Big feet. <laughs> I, don't I just don't... <laughs> Just don't. Why did you make that? I don't know what I was <laughs> expecting. I mean, it made you laugh, didn't it? That was terrible. Like, <laughs> I, I, like I, I feel like I subconsciously knew it was going to go along those lines, but just the delivery was just so perfect. <laughs> oh man! But anyway, but I'm trying to top up with cryptids. I like obviously I've heard of Bigfoot and things like that, but other than that, I have literally I've gone into this episode like completely blind. Mm. So. Everything I'm, I'm learning is coming from the source of Connell. So <laughs> I, I was somewhat aware of what they were before, like obviously, you know, Bigfoot and shit like that. And you're like, I mean, I know, I know we're not, they are weirdly. I know we're not covering it today, but as Someone? a kid, I was obsessed with the Loch Ness monster. <laughs> I don't remember this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, I am younger than you, so yeah. that's not surprising. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good old Nessie. Anyway, would you like me to give you a brief into? Introduction to what a cryptid is. Yes. Do what it. is a cryptid? Right. Cryptids are animals presumed by followers of the cryptozoological pseudoscientific subculture <laughs> to exist on the basis of, of anecdotal or other evidence considered insufficient by mainstream scientists. While biologists really identify new species following established scientific methodology, cryptozoologists focus on entities mentioned in the folklore, record, and rumor. So, in layman's terms, they Im- don't exist? Imaginary stuff, yeah. yeah. They're, they're kind of I mean, like, the evidence can't really be proven, or they're, they're more centered around legends, you know, like old stories, like so sources that can't be backed, that kind of thing, you know? Are aliens technically cryptids, then? Um, oh. Sort of. They're like nuts. Yes. Ufology and cryptozoology. Oh, <laughs> uh, they kind of exist within the same realm, but ufology is a bit more plausible, I would say. Yeah. Mm. I love it. Like way. aliens is more plausible than like a giant fish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we well, well, no, because we know that you know there have been. For lack of a better term, giant fish throughout history. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. prehistoric. Megal- the, the, yeah, the, the, exactly. And, like, the and yes, story. sharks are technically fish. Yeah. For anyone who wants to debate that point. So, sorry, ju- think, would, yeah. just talking about like debating points. It was so funny. We had someone come into work the other day, and she was just like, "Oh, I can't eat dairy except for eggs." And I just kind of looked at her, and I was like, "But eggs are poultry." Hold on. <laughs> she was Hold like, on the "I just kind of stared at her as a like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry." She was like, "I can't have dairy except for eggs," and I was just like, um, I, "Okay, yeah, yeah." I, <laughs> I have, I've never actually thought about that, but yeah, I guess eggs. They're are poultry, po- yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's not dairy. Like nothing in them is dairy. I, I, I've just never had to make that distinction before. Yeah, it was just, uh, just I talking just about don't distinctions. Eat eggs, in general, <laughs> really. <laughs> Not, uh, not really, no, no. Uh, Bro, I love me a good egg. Other than a chicken egg, but even then, I'm still like... I mean, I've, ne- I've never been a fan of, like, boiled eggs or anything, but... I'm not you, you do, breakfast food. You do too. proper, proper scrambled eggs on some nice toasted ciabatta. Oh, oh, it was so funny. I went to a restaurant and I got, like, toasties. It was for lunch and things like that, but I got, like, a breakfast toasty and I asked for an egg on the side <laughs> because I wanted, like... Sandwiches or like burgers and things like that with eggs in them are so nice. So I asked for an yeah. egg on the side, and the waitress was kind of like, "Oh, uh, okay, sure, yeah. I guess." And she took it to the chef, and the chef asked if I was pregnant and having weird cravings. What? <laughs> because, because you wanted an egg. <laughs> because I wanted an egg with my sandwiches. Oh. He was like, "Is she pregnant?" Oh and I was like, uh, "No, I just really oh. wanted an egg." I th- I think that is that is a <laughs> perfectly reasonable request. Yeah, I, just, I was just like, I just wouldn't egg to put on my sandwiches. <laughs> just cook the woman an egg. I don't see how that led to pregnancy. It was just like, yeah, is she having like weird cravings or something? Is she pregnant? And like, oh, it was crack up though. The waitress like loved me for that whole thing. She was just like, I was, like after I finished my meal, she was like, how was everything? And I was like, you know what? The egg, perfect. And she just lost her shit in the middle of the restaurant. Like she had to go back into the kitchen because she couldn't stop laughing. And speaking, I was like, spe- yeah. speaking of eggs, are you familiar with the film Once Were Warriors with Tim Weir Morrison? Oh, no, I've heard of I that. I don't know. I don't I remember mean, have, if I've seen I mean, have, it. Have you seen the egg scene? Oh, he, he, uh, yeah. Okay, he yeah. beats his wife because she yeah. won't make him eggs. 
Yeah. Well, apparently, uh, this, this is a this story is a few years old, but apparently Timur Morrison's gar- like garbage collectors know where he lives. <laughs> every he reckons yeah. that every time every time they drive past to collect his, his garbage, they'll, they'll yell they'll yell at his house. Hey, Jake, cook us some eggs. <laughs> yeah, that that used to happen to oh my ex at course. Every single time he went to course, they would, they'd say that to him. Oh no! <laughs> speaking okay. speaking of Timur Morrison, also Boba Fett. Boba Fett, he's back, baby. <laughs> Spoilers for The Mandalorian Season 2. Sorry. You said the spoilers after you <laughs> said it. That's not how it works. Well, <laughs> look, it was announced before the season even aired that he would be coming back. I mean, yeah, if you, so, if you don't know that by you know. now. Anyway, speaking of, Cryptid, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> a little yeah, off topic yeah, there. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um... Wrong show. <clears throat> yes, starting off with the Kraken. Ah, yes, the clear your throat into the mic. <laughs> well, that, that, that was for, um... Dramatic effect. Dramatic effect. I was going to say comedic, but it just wasn't funny, so. Uh, (laughs) The Kraken. (laughs) So, uh, the Kraken, you're probably well aware of it, but the Kraken is a a legendary sea monster of gigantic size and cephalopod-like appearance in Scandinavian folklore. I did not know it was from Scandinavian folklore. I just knew of it. I just assume everything's, like, um, ancient. uh, Ancient. Um, Like Greek? yeah, or like European, like way back when, you know, like Victorian times and oh, things like that. European, yeah, yeah, I just assume oh, okay. everything's so, so from we're like thinking like, of... well, yeah, no, uh, well, yeah, no, the kind of Norse period, like Vikings and stuff, that, yeah. that would have been around that time. Of talking you know, like, when everyone was yeah, wearing like powdered wigs yeah, and we're things talking like, like that. Yeah, and they were like raiding England in <laughs> the 10th, 19th, 11th century, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, that's roughly that's that's like just pre medieval period. So mm. yeah, because um, the med- the medieval period is considered to uh, run from around one thousand AD to fifteen hundred AD. Roughly, it, it's, it's you have so much just like, random facts. Like <laughs> in his head, I don't know where he. Yeah, I win at Trivial Pursuit every time. Yes, we it's great. Unfortunately. I've never played. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, it's not great. Um, anyway, continuation of that. According to the Norse sagas, the Kraken dwells off the coasts of Norway and Greenland and terrorizes nearby sailors. Authors over the years have postulated that the legend may have originated from sightings of giant squids that may grow to 13 to 15 meters, or 40 to 50 feet if you're inferior in length. <laughs> um, the sheer size and fearsome appearance attributed to the Kraken have made it a common ocean-dwelling monster in various fictional works. Uh, the Kraken has been the focus of many sailors passing the North Atlantic, and especially sailors from Nordic countries. Throughout centuries, the Kraken has been a staple of sailors' superstitions and mythos. Are you reading mm. straight from, like, Wikipedia? Or um, what it I, is? I, oh, I, I've, tro- I've chopped it up a bit, but <laughs> it is, like, mostly from Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I have the article open here, and it, yeah. it's, yeah, Just it's pretty close. Wikipedia is the best <laughs> source of information. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Everything's a thousand percent and legit. We, we don't care here if it's a hundred percent accurate. Okay. Oh yeah, we just say what we see. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean well, we, we we do we do check we do check sources to make sure they are reputable. Leave but that checks. I'll, I've, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they leave them in if it's funny. I've said it before, and I will say it again. Wikipedia is an acceptable research tool. Of course. Suck it, English teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, English teachers are the same people who are like you can't write essay in a day. Write two and three hours for the exam. Like oh, yeah. <laughs> They're the same people who claim that every single thing in a book means Has something. meaning, yeah. Like, no, maybe the author just likes the colour blue, you yeah. know? I was, the curtains <laughs> are blue. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that mountain oh, shape just looked nice. Though. Yeah. Mm. Oh, God. Mm. Um, well, that was like, oh, I know we're getting like, completely off topic, but that was just like this um, art <laughs> critic. He was saying like, oh, you know, this means this, this means this, blah, blah, blah. It was like a black canvas that had some white splattered on it and then one singular red dot. And the art mm. critic was going on about how like that red dot represents the artist and like a void or whatever, blah, blah. blah. And then the artist came to the gallery and the critic was like, so what, what does this mean? What does that red dot mean? <laughs> and he looked at it and he went, huh? And went up, scratched the canvas and he was like, oh. Must have splashed it when I was painting that one. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's it's so like you, they, people can like oh, think into good. anything what you want. I, I feel like when you're at like a higher level in your field, you kind of have to look for all the dumb shit that doesn't actually mean mm. anything. But you're like, 
I, I got I got to prove that I am actually qualified for what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I, I would imagine a lot of uh, doctoral theses are like based on bullshit. Oh yeah, it's like you have you have to. I mean, especially within the scientific world, you know, you have to. Like, you're right over there. Yeah, I was just almost dropped a few things. Re- wrestling with your water bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Of course. Don't don't spill that on your computer. That that's a bad time. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, I mean the the basis of a scientific thesis, a doctoral thesis, is you need to form a hypothesis and just run with it. And even yeah. if you are completely wrong, if you put in the you know time and effort and the research and you can show you're working and all that. That, that's fine. Well, that's what used to get like A's and things at the science fairs. It's like mm. I I proved in thirty different ways on how I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is science. Yeah, that is science. You, the basis of science is trying to disprove yourself, and if you can't disprove your hypothesis, that that means that it's valid. Yeah, and you've made a yeah I, I scientific guess. discovery. I that benefits I mean, that's probably the same with all these, like, cryptos and things like that. They're just like, ah, sorry, I just uh, saw a stick. It wasn't the Loch Ness Monster. Ah, <laughs> like, uh, well. <laughs> all right. Um. It's like, ah, uh, we, can't, we can't, you know, prove it wasn't not the Loch Ness Monster. So surely it must be the Loch Ness Monster. It's like, ah, yeah. I, I'm not quite sure that's <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, yeah, pretty much. Oh, dear. What? Sorry, I'm just looking at this cable that is, like, Oh yeah, it's my burningly, burningly yeah, very stretched. Yeah, be, because of all the mics and setup that we have currently, like we're all in like the very far three. Qu- we're forming our own <laughs> Bermuda Triangle in Connell's room, yes. pretty much to yeah. minimize all the um, echo yeah, and things right. like that. <laughs> and I'm stretched like to cables width capacity. Like you know just you gonna can throw something, pole. throw something yeah. in the middle, see if it oh, disappears. But my, moving my the pole. <laughs> Like, don't I was worry, like, no, moving the pole would not the ceiling to the matter about the cable. Over and over again. I'm just having my own podcast over here. Yeah. My own. So, um, Kraken. Yeah. The, the, it's, yeah. um, the name is taken from uh, like, modern modern Scandinavian, right? The Kraken. Yeah, I think it was like Kraken or something. As, as something like that. And, and, and it uh, comes from the same root as the English uh, crook or crooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do remember that when I was reading. Are you literally looking at it right now? Yeah. Maybe. He is. So, <laughs> as we've established, Lee's the overachiever. Like, he's the one who's, he's like that one smart kid that all of us make friends with. So, we're like, hey, can you help us with our homework? Well, the audience I, has a right to know. <laughs> I mean, I, I read it all. I just didn't put it all down on my notes. Uh, yeah. I wanted, like, the main kind of body of the, the juicy bits. Of the cryptid, you know. Anyway. Yeah, so I, I didn't know hmm. it was originally Nordic, Scandinavian, or whatever. And um, what confused me was that, so it, it was postulated, or is postulated that the Kraken was some form of, like, subspecies of the colossal or giant squid. Mm. But the colossal giant, s- or the colossal squid specifically, and the giant squid are, like, native to Antarctican waters. And ah. so they're not, I, d- I don't think they've been spotted near mm. Arctic waters or whatever, or northern Mind waters. Mind you. Not quite sure. Isn't only like eight percent of our oceans been like searched or that seems looked like at? A very low number. Yeah. Well, um, in two thousand fifteen, it, yeah. it was only five percent. So that's why I'm saying it's probably like eight now. Really? But yeah, we've only searched like. What did you want? I'm saying less than ten percent of the world's oceans because they run so deep. Like some parts, you like physically cannot get down. <laughs> yeah. A lot of ocean. We've searched more of space than we have of the ocean. I mean, yeah. It makes yeah. Sense because like you can just fit like a, a mountain. You could just stack mountains in the ocean because they're just it's so deep, like in most parts of like the deep ocean and whatnot. Like yeah, Pacific five percent. I mean, it's it's whatnot. also um, uh, there's also also a theory that it could be a previously undiscovered species of giant octopus. Mm, yes, yeah, I, I did see that. I mean, there's giant squid. Well, Why not giant octopus? Some Jurassic species or like a dinosaur species or something like that mm. from that era. But to inject. Like they, they, they don't have any way to prove it. That's what it is with the cryptids. They don't have any way to prove it. Yeah. It's the same mm. with the Kraken. We're still at 5%. And the 5% that has been charted is majority like the surface. So, you know, like maps. Like they've charted the surface. Yeah, so they yeah. know that the ocean looks like that, but like underneath like we haven't really gone into. Yeah, so it says just 5% of the oceans uh, have been explored and charted, especially the ocean below the surface remains undiscovered. 
or unseen by humans. They, they, they actually just recently discovered a new species of whale. Yeah. Like whales? Yeah. Yeah, like a, a, a species of whale that they had no idea existed. Yeah. That's, that's nuts. So what, what proves that the megalodon isn't still like chilling, but it's just like changed its environment? So um, it could be like in the know, depths could, could of be the like ocean. Movie the Meg, where it's just yeah. like <laughs> underneath like the subsurface of what the Mariana Trench or something. I mean, like, yeah. Like what? What's to say that it's not though? Uh, well, because I mean, that's it, the thing. It like, would have been likely discovered by now. Because but things evolve. So what if it's just like evolved? Also, they to just found a new whale. <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Lee. What is, a, what is this um, whale called? A megalodon probably I do, hold on, let me... Swim you don't deep, know. I would hold think, on. Because of its bodily structure. Even if it evolved, it wouldn't be considered a megalodon anymore. Well, yeah, it'd be like it megalodon w- 2.0. It'd be like less, less than a thousand meters down. It wouldn't go further than that. Because I know from looking at this, like, colossal squids would... like. It would just be V2 meters. megalodon. You know, like when Charizards and things like that evolve, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> megalodon don't. to... Want to don't. <laughs> not quite right. Don't want Megala, to do not discover me again. <laughs> Bugger off. Donger. Sorry, all these freaking news sites with their donate windows. What are you um, on about, Lee? Again, you're just having your own little podcast. Yes. <laughs> Look, all these news sites want me to donate to them. It's like, I just want this one article. Leave me alone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I can continue on with my notes if you yes. would wish. We do. This is your episode Um, this week. After returning from Greenland, the anonymous author of the old Norwegian natural history work, uh, (laughs) Gonung Skuja, (laughs) yeah, definitely got that. We'll go with that. Uh, We'll go with that, yeah. I'm sorry, Connor, what was that name? Shut up. (laughs) Described in detail the physical characteristics and feeding behavior of these beasts. The narrator proposed there must be only two in existence, apparently. Stemming from the observations that the beasts have always been sighted in the same the same parts of the Greenland Sea, and that each seem incapable of reproduction, as there were no increase in their numbers. So there's just two chilling around like Adam and Eve. They could just be <laughs> uber old, and they're just yeah. they're just chilling. There. Yeah, that's the idea. And there's a, another um, account from the late 13th century where the uh, actually no, I think this is a a um, no this is a old Icelandic story. Um, they encountered two monsters in the Greenland Sea called Hafgufa, uh, which translates as sea mist, and Lingvaka, which translates as heatherback. I think I got those right. You made it sound better than what I made yeah. it sound there one. So yeah. yeah, and the uh, Hafgufa is uh, believed to be a reference to the Kraken. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, and... Spooky, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, of course, Greenland at the time was, like, Pretty much exclusively uh, populated by Viking people. Um, yeah, it would have been like sparsely populated. Yeah, well, they, they actually they, it was actually um, like a like really good land back then, and they disco- actually discovered it because they um, overshot England when they were trying to get Classic. there during the uh, during the invasion. Yeah, <laughs> they found this random like massive unexplored island nation. Like Isn't there a thing that England. they call like Iceland, Greenland, and Greenland, Iceland to like trick people um, into like going? Because obviously Greenland sounds lush. I don't know, but that's like entirely that, possible. Like, yeah, I don't know if that's just like completely made. I have heard that before, but I don't know if it's made mm. up or something. It was like to trick settlers or something because Iceland obviously doesn't sound like somewhere you'd want to go, but Greenland sounds like super like lush and it's possible. Yeah, I mean, bo- both both are. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah like, it sounds fair enough, mm. but the fact that it's not really that much that settled maybe well, points yeah. it otherwise. Um anyway, continuing on, I already said about the bloody uh Antarctic waters, which I brought up earlier than my notes, so skipping <laughs> over that. Um Kraken were extensively described by Eric Pontopadon, Bishop of Bergen, in his Why are there fucking words, man? <laughs> Uh, read, yeah, read, the, read the read the read the translation. <laughs> yeah, just the first attempt at natural history of Norway, Copenhagen, seventeen thirty two. I did not need to read that out, but I did. Uh, <laughs> on top of that, made several claims regarding Kraken, including the notion that the creature was sometimes mistaken for an island, and that the real danger to sailors was not the creature itself, but rather the wh- whirlpool. Why can't I say whirlpool? <laughs> Left in its wake. However, Whirlpool also described the destructive potential. Fuck's sakes. Picture <laughs> of the giant beast 
It is said that if the creature's arms were to lay hold of the largest man of war, they would pull it down to the bottom. Man of war referring to a big boat. sailing vessel. <laughs> yes. Scary boat. But this is the thing, like, they were at sea for, you know, like, who knows how long. They could have just been seeing things, and then someone's like, yeah, no, yeah. I, I saw that. It's the same as same as mermaids and shit. Yeah. yeah. It's they're just like they're just sun. delirious and they're like, oh, yeah. I haven't seen a woman in yeah, three well, months. Mer- mermaids were likely um, inspired by sightings of manatees, which makes you wonder, like, you know, I mean, I suppose they'd been at sea for a while, but come on, <laughs> yeah. Like if if if, that, if that's what's you know, you know, get getting them off. Yeah. Like. Mm. Oh, don't say it like I mean, you guys know what a manatee looks yeah, like, right? Yeah. 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 Somewhat, but like come also on. known as a sea, sea cow. Oh. <laughs> that's a bit rude. Um, it's not inaccurate. Yeah. No, I th- I think <laughs> that notion that the kraken could create whirlpools that scares me more than the kraken itself because a yeah. whirlpool sounds yeah. terrifying, like a gigantic one, and then the kraken's just at the bottom of it with its mouth open. That is <laughs> that's fucking scary. I do not like that. Yeah, and I don't like it when I see visualizations of that. I'm like, no, thank you. What's the cool? ocean. <laughs> well, I ain't about it. Like, imagine, do you remember, like, when you were in school and everyone used to, like, run in a circle in the pool to make a whirlpool? Yeah, like, you'd that. always, yeah, but you'd always, like, slip over and you'd be like, ah, imagine, like, that, but, like, a thousand times in the ocean and it's sucking down your boat. <laughs> yeah, you just give up at that point. Well, yeah, I guess, yeah. You can't do anything. You're just like, oh, fuck. What's, what's, like, the equivalent of it? I, I don't know if, um, in Greek mythology, it's, like, Terabitus or Cherubitus or... Something or rather along those lines, but it like pretty much does the same thing. It's just the swirling vortex that yeah that sits at the bottom of the whirlpool and just consumes sailors. Are you talking about that thing that's in Percy Jackson? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's it's pretty much like the Kraken as well. Yeah. It's like I guess they were influenced by each other. So Levi- like, Leviathan? Is that what we're talking about? No, no, no. Sorry, I zoned out for a second. Uh, Cherubitis. Cherubitis. I don't know. Uh, You've seen Percy Jackson's second one, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, I used um, to know how to... I know, I know in the book, uh, it's at the entrance of the Sea of Monsters. Uh, yeah. Sealer. Charybdis? Yeah. Yeah. Could, could have been any pronunciation. Yeah, pretty almost much. Had it. But yeah, I, <laughs> it seems like almost exactly like the Kraken, so maybe like one culture influenced the other. Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, well, I mean, dur- you know, back during those times when, you know, uh, ocean travel was the only way to get anywhere, and it was... Like massive voyages, months on end, and people didn't know anything about what was out there. Yeah, you know, I mean, again, if they like heard of the legends of like the Greek mythology one, they're probably like, oh, I've seen that. It's here too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And I mean, even even to, even today, we have you know myths about the ocean. You know, we've yeah. got the Bermuda Triangle. That's that's a great example. Um, and it's so easy for things to go missing out at sea. Yeah. yeah. There's always going to be fear, like with the ocean, just because it is. The unknown currently, right now, like more mm. so than space, it's just unknown. Oh, what should would you do, rather we explore? We would you rather explore space or the ocean? Mm, neither. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm quite same. happy here. Yeah. I mean, space you're probably in more danger, but the ocean, like, see, I don't know because ocean, that's man. a thing. There's, like, there's, there's things there. Oh. That's, that's no, the thing. I do... Space is harder to get into, but I feel like once oh. you're in space, like you're you're Gucci. In the, in the ocean, <laughs> like I, I do, I do have mild thalassophobia. I think so. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> fear, fear of deep water. Fear of deep water. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Have, have you have, have, have sorry, you have you seen that video? That. You seen that video of that guy? Um, like, just like he he gets gets up to the edge of the of a blue hole and then just like like steps off and falls uh, into it. Like yeah. Oh, he just sinks. No. Yeah. no. 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 I have no. not seen this, but no, I I think that was quite <sighs> liked going out. In the ocean, but I don't. I don't think I even hear it fear. But I'm like, I still don't like it. No, I have a healthy com- respect mm. for the ocean, like as I, you should for most things. Yeah. Yes, I like surfing and things like that, and like that's all. Like I love mm. the ocean, but that's the thing. I'm not afraid of like drowning or whatever. I'm afraid of what's in the ocean because like with surfing and things like that, yeah. I always want to go surfing at back beach. But then everyone's like, oh, there's occasionally the odd shark there. So I'm just like, ah, uh, <laughs> sharks are jellyfish fun. there. Yeah. Are there jellyfish there? Yeah, blue bottles. Oh, they can... oh yeah, they, they they wa- they wash up yeah, occasionally. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's They're, a lot of them there. Blue, yeah, no, blue bottles are like sharks are fine. Thing. Sharks you can see coming. Sharks right. Um, mm, for the most part. Sharks, sharks are pretty docile. I mean, yeah, sharks won't it, like attack you. Like they don't. Had it lol. Like, because that's the thing. <laughs> Most shark attacks happen because they think you're like a seal or something, yeah. and then they're like, "Oh shit, that's not that's not what I thought it was." But like, still, 
me being like a learning surfer, it's not like <laughs> I can just be like, ah, oh, I'll just, you know, surf my way out of here. Like I'm, I'm stuck. I'm essentially just on a raft. Yeah. <laughs> just like floating. Oh, I'm boy. like, ah, shark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Um, did you have to do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I muted my microphone before I did that. Oh, okay, Thank cool. Awesome. Much. I did not just burp during the microphone. <laughs> I think unless I unmuted it as I did it. But, you know, we can move on now. Because yeah, we move. 25 minutes in and... Bon top it done. Still on. That's a great name. Now, um, What's a great name? Bon top it done. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> bon top it done. Oh, I see. <laughs> pop it on. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the classic Bigfoot, obviously. Um, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch, <laughs> in Sasquatch. Canadian folklore and Squatch. American folklore, is an ape-like creature that is said to inhabit the forest of North America. What's it, the bit? It's just some like real big burly guy that just wanted to live off the grid. <laughs> <laughs> He's a I love it. I love that. <laughs> um, supposed evidence of Bigfoot's existence is based on a number of disputed video recordings, audio recordings, photographs, visual sightings, casts of large footprints, etc. Some of these are speculated or known to be hoaxes. Because, like, Freaking big I feel like man. Canada yeah. has two types of, like, people. Like, the thin, wiry guys or just, like, the big, like... Canada. Yeah. What? That's highly specific. I don't know where you're <laughs> getting this. Yeah, this where did Canada come into it? I don't it. know where you're getting this assumption Didn't from. you say Canadian? I did say Canadian folklore. Yeah. Did you? Did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I sp- yeah, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. I suppose it's it kind of overlaps. No, I'm talking a little about one. just from just from people yeah. I've met. Like, obviously, I've never been to Canada, but you met? a few actually. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a few is not um quite the demographic. I mean, you know, <laughs> but I'm, I work with a Canadian dude. It's it's he's, fine. He's cool. You know, generalizations nice are great. <laughs> but like, yeah, what's the f- bit? It's just some guy that like, because it's not uncommon for people w- wanting to live off the grid, especially no. in places. Such as the likes of that. Well, not really. There's, there's <laughs> that, that kind of area, yeah. 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 Cause of what, uh, it's just some guy like, leave me alone. It's like uh, the American Northwest, most of the sightings are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah around a- the American Northwest. Appalachia's yeah, kind of so area. Forest, Appalachia. Boy, mountainous forest areas. Kind yeah. Of not very familiar with um, American Topography? Yeah, is that the correct word? Topography, topography geography. Yeah, same kind of same difference. Yeah, Topo- I, I topography more yeah. refers to <laughs> like um, the lay of the land maps and stuff. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, so we're, to- we're talking about we're talking about like kind of West Virginia, Appalachia's yeah. kind of area. West Virginia. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> the, the known one, the, the yeah. common commonly known one, because pretty much everybody yes. knows about Bigfoot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean. Bigfoot uh, can kind of the myth around Bigfoot can kind of be traced back to the um, like European wild man myths. Like this is, this is something that's always been yeah, and, and you like, know, and like different cultures a thing. they've had um, different versions of something just like you know in the forest. Yeah. you know, when to snatch the children. You know. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If if it's not a person, like, what do you think realistically it could be? Um, <laughs> moonshine. From what I've read, uh, no, I'm just talking about like your own, my own opinion. My own opinion. Yeah. Like from something that is, I was going to say tangible, but something that like probably just misrepresented the sightings of animals. I mean, there's always the possibility of it being some like subspecies of um, ape, maybe who knows. But it's maybe, highly yeah. unlikely given that they haven't been found. <laughs> yeah. You know. Because if they've stuck around this, l- I mean, I don't know when Bigfoot sighting started, but if they've been around this long, there should be a larger community. Of That's the species. thing, though. I feel like Bigfoot is the one thing that is like, it's almost a possibility that's a real thing because so many people talk about it, and like, there's programs on like finding Bigfoot and things like that. Yeah, there are I mean, it, it is America, though. Yeah, <laughs> true. Just, like yeah. to rile shit up in the media. So. Oh yes. You would you would think with all those shows and stuff, you know, and people going out looking for it, they, they'd have found something concrete. Dude, th- I think yeah. there's like four seasons of Finding Bigfoot. Like, <sighs> how could you be so sucked into a series that they just never like the point of the series is never achieved? Oh, I, 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 I it's don't. It's the know. unknown. People like the unknown, and they reel you in with like, you know, um, fucking clickbait, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> like cable TV clickbait. I I don't get it. I really don't 
Yeah, but I mean, I know you might watch like one video on YouTube or something, but if you're gonna watch a show for that long mm. <laughs> without anything, and like they'll literally put fake stuff in the show, like, oh, that must be real. And yeah. Like, no, no mm. you can clearly see that. Like you've thing. watched three <laughs> seasons of the show, and someone comes in and be like, ah, oh, have they found anything? And you're like, no, yeah, but they're on. The <laughs> they're, yeah. they're they're about to. I mean, spe- speaking of fake footage, let's let's talk about the Patterson Gimlin film. The what? Uh, sorry. And that's that's the uh, you know the. Real. That, that's the quintessential Bigfoot footage. Oh, you know, it's, the it's, the, the, the real the shaky. The one with him striding like through the woods. Yeah. 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 yeah it's. I don't think I've seen this. Yeah. Of this. No. No. Okay. It's it's like famous. the the piece of Bigfoot evidence. Um. The, I've got a still from it here. You've just seen that image? That is an ape. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll I'll I'll, t- I'll tell you what it is. It's a man in a suit. He's in a costume that the the, Pat- the Patterson Gimlin film was like f- test footage for a, a student film. I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, um, so I mean, yeah, yeah, it could be, could be very likely. It's, it's literally it's, it's just, just a man's like, on a stroll. This is a really large student in an <laughs> ape suit, and he's just got like a big bear belly. He's like, whoa, he's walking yeah. he's drunk. He's like, yeah. I yeah, um, it's I mean, just I've like an off cut from Disney that was just got well, there is <laughs> <forest rave> or <laughs> something. There is there is stabilized there is stabilized footage of it available online, and you can very clearly see that it's a guy in a costume. <laughs> yeah, just chilling. He's in the woods. Yeah, he's going. like like when the, when the when the camera's all shaky and you can't get a good fix on it, it you know it looks convincing, but then yeah. it's stabilized and it's like oh yeah no that's just like, just, that just looks a, like a normal human it's a dude in a costume walking along. You're he's like ah, like, what's that by zipper in the back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did like see. I did see an image, and it was it was supposedly a. I don't hmm. know. Why I did air quotes when nobody can see air quotes on <laughs> YouTube. But it's you got it's in permanent place. It's supposedly like hmm. a uh, juvenile Bigfoot. <laughs> it was just like slinking along. A child. <laughs> but oh, apparently, yeah. it's like a bear with the mange or something. The mange. 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 Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Why I said mange. Uh, you, mange. Mm. I don't, I, there's a lot about you I don't question. <laughs> fair enough. I, I get that a lot. But like, that's the thing, especially because I've seen like ads from the Finding Bigfoot, things like that. Like Obviously, a lot of it's night footage. And it just looks like from the, uh, what do you call it, the split second that they're like, oh, it's Bigfoot. It just looks like they've seen, because like, you know people show up in night footage like bright white light sort of thing because it mm. reflects and things like that it just looks like they've seen one of their crew members and gotten like a jump scare from like seeing something bright in the camera and then just yeah. being like oh my god like that's all and it looks like i know i know i know from a few episodes that that, that i have seen that th- there is a guy on the team who like is massive yeah and they use him to like recreate um like Footage, eyewitness yeah. accounts that. yeah like, <laughs> and, it's entirely possible that they've caught, they've caught him on camera yeah. accidentally. And then just and got, like, scared him. from it and been like, oh, my God, and, like, it shakes. And then he comes yeah. up later and he's like, wait, what? What'd you see? Also, they could just be faking it. I mean, yeah, know? the entire show could be fake. <laughs> it's, it's, prob- it's probably what it is. Um, Freaking Bigfoot. What, what else are we looking at? Yeah, thousands of people have claimed to have seen Bigfoot, and it is commonly described as a large, muscular, bipedal, ape-like creature, roughly... Six to nine feet, 1.8 to 2.3 meters. Covered in hair, described as black, dark brown, or dark reddish. A Sorry, six to nine feet is a massive difference. So are there like multiple big feet? Well, <laughs> I guess sometimes it's believed that it is like some form of species, so it could just be different. Uh, okay. Different individuals. He's a family. Well, if they have yeah, six maybe. to nine feet, why are they called big feet and not many feet? <laughs> that was bad. But, um, that was but bad. I, but you know it was a good bad joke because we both like audibly just went. Oh. Look, I I start I started it and I knew it was a bad idea and I wanted to stop but I didn't. <laughs> and I think in. I think I should be commended for my stick to itiveness. <laughs> Moving on. Um, yeah, according to a man. <laughs> a man. A man. Nice. A, no, this guy called David Dangling. <laughs> The legends existed before there was a single name for the creature. They differed in their details both regionally and between families in the same community. Well, because uh, there, there were there were accounts of um, like big, giant man creatures uh, from Native American Native yeah, American communities, yeah. right? There's like sculptures and stuff of them, I think. It's yeah. so funny though, like the most uncreative name you've got, like the Kraken, the Loch Ness monster. Oh, he left a big footprint here, Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Well, <laughs> on, on that note. <laughs> 
The name Bigfoot first gained renown by a uh, fucking name's not the name. W- Weandot? Weandot? That'll Weandot. do. <laughs> Chief. Oh with that nickname in the 1830s, who derived his name from the immense size of his feet, surprisingly enough. Wait. <laughs> his height considerably exceeded <laughs> six feet, and his strength was represented as Herculean. So the name came from a Native American chief? Possibly. There was also another uh, chief called Spotted Elk who was called Chief Bigfoot as well. And he was murdered in a massacre, apparently. What a surprise. Ah. America. And then... Speci- specifically, he was murdered during Wounded Knee Massacre. Yes. I yes. didn't bother to get the specific because I'm lazy. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's a and pretty... Additionally, uh, there were two enormous marauding grizzly yeah. bears who were widely noted in the press and each nicknamed Bigfoot. So it could <laughs> just... <laughs> Could just be a bear, to be honest. It's probably a bear. It's, bro- it's probably a bear. It's probably a bear who's just really sickly, and she's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, bears I mean, can I'm, stand on their hind legs as I'm, well. I'm looking. I'm looking at a picture that um, that they claim is a uh, bear with mange, and yeah, I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, let's see. <laughs> it's uh. Here we go. Oh. Yeah, there it yeah. is. Oh, you shit. can, you can, you can see it, right? <laughs> You can Bro, see how that, that would be yeah. misidentified as a Sasquatch. Easily. I'm sorry, what is mange? It's like a it's like a skin it's a skin disease. Yeah, like they lose fur and stuff and they become like It gets real and scabby uh, and Yeah. It's not great. Nasty. Yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that looks more like a werewolf though. Then <laughs> Oh boy, I'd love to do an episode on werewolves. Uh, <laughs> Let's do an episode on werewolves. Why not? Yeah. Werewolves we'll, and vampires. We'll put, we'll put it on the list. Oh, yeah, that's like, and uh, yeah. One yes. Day, one day. Let's talk about Twilight. <laughs> let's, let's, chill let's, out. let's let's get, not. Let's get through this episode first. And yes, no Twilight. Let's, let's not, not talk about Twilight, huh? <laughs> Bro, I actually love Twilight. <laughs> well, you're wrong. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how you're wrong about loving Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. People are allowed to like things. Let's come to a con- for Twilight. A conclusion on on Bigfoot. I think it. Yeah, probably just a bear with mange. Yeah. Is that is that yeah. our conclusion? Yeah, maybe it's a really big bear. Yeah. He's just standing up. There's a really big bear. There was a guy living out in the woods. Yeah, or you know. yeah, or some guy that's just like I wanna yeah. like live off the grid. I do know that there was another speculation that it was a predecessor of the Gigantopithecus species of dinosaur. Not dinosaur. <laughs> Sorry, I know I said dinosaur. <laughs> From dinosaur a, like periods. A prehistoric mammal. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. W- whenever I think of like that age, I'm just like dinosaur, dinosaur, dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, it's like a it was, it was like a giant ape kind of thing. Yeah. Um Yeah, and if if you look at the size of these fossils they've found, this thing is massive. Large. Um, yeah. Huh. Anyway. There. Uh, anyway, moving on. Thank you, Bigfoot. Oh uh, yes. We shall move on to the Chubacabra. See, th- I've heard this name so many times, I don't remember what it is now. Uh, no, I didn't really remember either. I just knew it, and I'm like, that's yeah. creepy. And I'd see, like, images of it, I'm like, I still don't I don't know even what remember what it looks like. I, d- I have literally no idea any of this. The Chubacabra. Looks like a lizard man. Goat sucker. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah. From Spanish, is a legendary creature in the folklore of parts of the Americas. With its uh, first... <laughs> ju- oh, yep. That is not English. This... Didn't write hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me have a look. Jen, Jen's just looking at this. No. Oh, no. I see. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a lizardy thing. What on earth is that? That literally looks like a fishman, <laughs> something. Yeah. If you've seen uh, Monsters vs. Aliens, the animated thing, he looks like the missing link. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yes, right, got it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. That was such yeah. an obscure reference. Um, okay, that so where are we? Where, where are we looking? What are you not able to pronounce? Do we forget? No, 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 no. It was, it was, it was just that it was miswritten in the article, and it was purported instead of reported. <laughs> purported. <laughs> purported. Purported. Purported sighting. <laughs> no, that's that's a word. That's it's a word. It's purported a word. Yes. What does purported I mean? I've never in my um, life heard purported. Like uh, believed. Like believed I'm to sorry? be. Yeah. Yes. Wait, I'm gonna Google this. Purported. Oh. You, you, you got, you, how how long have you known me? You know that it's dangerous to bet against me. Well, wait, is yes. it spelled P U R? Yeah, appearing or stated to be true, though not necessarily so. Alleged. English is dumb. Boom. Um, anyway, sightings reported in Puerto Rico in 1995. The name comes from the animal's reported vampirism. The chupacabra is said to attack and drink the blood of livestock, including goats. Yeah, so Chupacabra obviously uh, 
Spanish name. It's from like Mexico, Central America kind of thing. Uh, it comes from the verb chupar, to suck, and uh, the noun cabras, or goats. Yes. I didn't hey. skip over that. I just wanted yes. to get through the main meat. Yes. So, yeah, literally goat sucker. Ew. Yeah. Yeah. Although, from what I've seen, th- th- there's not really much, even though there are eyewitness reports, like, they're not very reliable, to be honest, so... I mean, n- none of the eyewitness reports of any of these are reliable, that really. Is, that is true, but there's a lot of, like, <laughs> conflicting factors in their statements and stuff, and it's like, yeah. But anyway, um, eyewitness signs have been claimed in Puerto Rico and have since then been reported as far north as Maine, as far south as Chile, and even outside the Americas in countries like Russia and the Philippines. Hmm. Oddly enough... Many of the reports have been described as uncorroborated or lacking evidence. Uh, and again, we have the uh, mange coming up, yeah. with uh, yeah. most of them being attributed to dogs with mange. Which is not s- what well, not dogs, right. coyotes, kind of. But then where does the like thing? fish lizard looking bit come in? Uh, uh, the eyewitnesses in the dark, uh, yeah, know, yeah, okay, seeing fair. things. I did read uh, further down. I'm pretty sure it was on Wikipedia. I read this. This guy did an uh, investigation. Benjamin Radford. He did a five-year investigation on called like tracking the chupacabra. It was a 2000 book. Right. And it pretty much talked about the first witness or credited the visual appearance, like what people think of it as, to mm. a um, creature from a 1995 science fiction horror film, Species, because the woman who <sighs> first reported seeing the chupacabra i'm pretty sure she'd seen the film just before <laughs> reporting seeing the chupacabra yeah that uh, tracks so it was influenced yeah by her seeing that so it's like ah okay well that's yep. the thing they've probably it's probably just like a wolf or something that's like killing goats and sheep and whatever yeah and then they're just like they need an explanation for what's been killing their livestock like yeah, yeah. and i mean a, a, a lot of um mexican and central american uh communities are still very um like superstitious when it comes yeah. to traditional legends and stuff well yeah um, that's the thing i mean especially any, for like the day of the dead and things like you need to have your like photos up and like oh, everything like there's so many yeah like, and especially especially among indigenous populations yeah like you, they're yeah um, you just don't and, mess and, with indigenous that. folks are always going to um or communities are always going to put more stock in those uh stories than yeah uh, tangible other things, yeah. folks are, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of just becomes part of their culture, so they don't really want to, like... Yeah, and they take the stuff seriously. In, in a way, I guess, they don't want to ruin it. It's part of their culture, you know, and society mm. in a weird way, so it's like, yeah. Well, it's something that's been ingrained into them. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, like how in, uh, like in Ireland, and, um... You know the rest. The rest of the UK. You know, the, like there's there's certain places that you don't go for, like in case you anger the, the uh, anger the, the fair folk. Mm. You know, uh, like even like even people even people who don't believe in the stuff. Like there's pla- there's things that they just don't do and places that they don't go after dark. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, a lot of like witch coven stuff and yeah, thing along those yeah. lines. A lot of supernatural stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd love paranormal, to not supernatural. Yeah. Yeah. I'd yes. love to do a thing there on is, witches there is a as well. There is, there is a, there is a difference. Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, supernatural uh, more refers to like uh, the spiritual stuff, like angels and demons and magic and um, that kind of thing. Whereas paranormal is more like cryptids and aliens and uh, right. Right, that kind right. of stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's a thin line. <laughs> yeah, uh, supernatural is spiritual. Paranormal is physical. That that's yeah. a very very basic way of remembering it. You can it. pretty much call the other one, you know, it can pretty much go both ways. Though, given yeah. How close it is. Some of them can, yeah. Um, yeah. What you, Ghosts. You were saying before. Um, apparently, da, 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 University of Michigan biologist Barry O'Connor. He um. He concluded that all the chupacabra reports in the United States were simply coyotes infected with the parasite Sarcoptes scabby, which it kind of just sounds like uh, the... Uh, scabby eye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, little fur, thickened skin, and a rank odor, and it was because (laughs) the animals were weakened by the parasite that they went after livestock instead of, like, prey that could actually run. Yeah, yeah. So, that seems like the most likely... That's plausible, yeah. 
of why people think there is a chupacabra. Yeah. Okay. Pretty cool. Just <laughs> some rabid animal. Yep. There's a lot more information than I thought. Like, I put a lot of information in this, but it was been produced very slowly and I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I mean, we can pretty much move on to the next one now because, I mean, essentially that's all the chupacabra yeah, so is. We want to go on to a very small, which I don't have much information on. Very what one? Very small um, amount of information because I don't have much on Sure. It's, cri- it's the Mongolian Death Whip. Now, uh, I yeah. have a certain nostalgic I used to be. Te- I used to be terrified of this thing. Yes, because there's been video games of it and there's been movies. And yeah. I do not, not know like what this thing. thing is. So the Mongolian death mm. worm, or large intestine worm, is a creature alleged to exist in the Gobi Desert. The creature first came to Western attention as a result of Roy Chapman Andrews' 1926 book on the trail of ancient man. The American paleontologist was not convinced by the tales of monsters that he heard at a gathering of Mongolian officials. Uh, and then presently there's a tomb of the creature that they believe it existed. So it's another case of, you know, the culture of the people there that it's, it's just ingrained mm. in without any like physical evidence of it. They're just like, yes, it exists. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of just like, so what I, is I, it? I don't think I have an accurate description of it. Um, how do you describe it? It kind of looks like a worm. Yeah. D- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got yeah. that much. It looks like a worm and most uh, illustrations, I guess, have like, like rounded mouth with like, Claws in it or fangs. Have you seen yeah. a microscopic image of a worm? Have I? That's what a worm looks like. Have you seen why a microscopic ha- image of a worm? A oh my gosh, you guys, I have to show you a microscopic image of a worm. Are you going to sound like this is something that we should what generally do? Yeah, like, oh my gosh, guys, guys, guys. Yeah, oh, the, 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 def- the death worm would also bury in the sand and, like, leap out of it. That was one of the most terrifying parts of it. Is, it, is, this, is, this what is this what we're talking that's, about here? That's what worms look like. Uh, that, that kind of thing. Like that, yeah. Like yeah. that one? Yeah. Yeah. That, that, is, that is what a worm Ugh. looks like. That's nuts. Yeah. So there, there was, there's versions where it's like really tiny mm. and it would just like just leap out of the sand and like just jump onto people and just like... What, like a leap? Like how big is this thing supposed to be? Uh, various. I think most of the like locals would say it's like a, it's like a small thing like snake size because this yeah. thing it, this thing looks like a, a sandworm from dune yeah <laughs> it legit does okay. we need we need to we need to get terrifying. we need to get some social media up and running so that we can post this stuff yeah this is, this is nuts i mean I, I put some of it on the actual video but who's going to be actually watching the video the <laughs> yeah. The yeah 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 I, I do it every so often i'm just like uh, We'll 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 work cool on uh, we'll yeah. work on getting getting some social media feeds up. Do you guys Do want some social media from the Zero Function podcast? Game, though, it was like a two D game, and I'll just like the worm would follow me constantly, just eat people, <laughs> just eat people. All right. And I, I don't know why, but I love the game. But but I was terrified of the creature. You know, it really does explain a lot <laughs> about it, it your would get personality, longer and longer though. The more people it ate. Yeah, so it's just like Nokia Snake, <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. but like a scary version. But more fun. Yeah, Jeez, apparently so it could spit venom and also like a paralyzing agent, which is even more terrifying. But it was so it could just be a very weird looking. Uh, I was going to say python, but what's a sand boa? Is yeah, what it is likely to be. Mm. Yeah, what people think it is, or just some species maybe that has been discovered because it just hides under the sand. Why? Why? Why is it? Why is it that people are so fascinated with worm creatures? You know, like, like worms. Like you know, the like <laughs> Dune tremors, like this this thing is so esoteric. Like I guess it's because when, pe- when esoteric- things come what? from where you can't see it, say there's a creature that's running across the ground towards you. You're like, yeah, I can see that. I can somehow <laughs> form a logical like decision to avoid that. Yeah, there's something come from the ground. It just like swallows you when it comes up. Yeah, like, you can't mm. you can't really dodge that. You might feel it coming, but you don't know when it's coming. Sorry, can we yeah. rewind to es- esoteric? Esoteric, yeah, yeah. Like, um, God, there's, there's a lot of words that are <laughs> difficult to, um, like explain. Like, I know, I know what they mean and what the proper context is to use them in. Do you know how to spell it? E S O T E R I C. Of course, I know how to spell it. Yes. Esoteric, intended for or likely to be understood by only a small number of people with a specialized knowledge or interest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so, like, this, this thing is so specific to this region of the world. Yeah. But it's, just, like, from from what I've seen, it's insanely popular, especially in the Western world. Yeah, I've never heard of it before. Uh, there's, really? There's multiple, there's been multiple. 
multiple like movies and stuff on it and for some I reason, must be I living under a rock. It's way to like nine year old me or something. <laughs> and I knew about it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like that thing. So it is within the. Yeah. So, but that's the thing. It's Again, bizarre. social media just like spreads shit like wildfire. Like not e- not even that. We're talking about like pre Facebook kind of yeah, time. Like just normal TV, you know. The yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, is TV technically not? Yes, sandworms. I like those. Yes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's that's kind of like all there is about it. Yeah, there's not much about it. It's it's not really one of the main... Like that, but that's the thing. Does it... It's does it, the mainstream it, cryptids, but Does it eat you? Does yeah. it... Oh. It consumes you. Ah. But I, like mean, I would imagine most of the things... consumes you like a parasite where it just kind of slowly eats you? Or does it like... Nah, uh, nah. Is it big enough like a snake that like I swallows you? I think it just eats you. Yeah. It's really small, but maybe it gets bigger the more it eats. I don't Ew. know. <laughs> it's hard to say because in some representations it's really large, and yeah. in some it's really small. And it's maybe like, it's just like, um, what do you call it? Like different sizes and things. Maybe it likes a specific part of the body. Like it just wants the brain specifically. Or like Ew, the heart. Why do you have to make it? Nah. Like, why is it just like it leaks <laughs> up and it just goes straight why, through why the heart and it's done? Why is it? Why is it the brain that? Got you. Oh, because it just reminds me of things, you know, like when they say like things go through your nose or like your ear or something and they just like uh, slowly, okay. like All that's, right. yeah, yeah. Parasites, yeah. Yeah, that's gotcha. what gets me. I'm just like, eh, no. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. No, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah. Righto. So, um, it wasn't much in that, but yep. we can move on to something that is also wildly popular and pretty much just Bigfoot, but snowy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Yeti, of course, or the ab- abdominal. 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 Abdom- 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 would you like me to take this one? A bonimal... <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Abominable snowman. There hey, it. got it. Hey, Fucking well done. Yeah, Good job. So anyway, <laughs> I'll refer to it as the Yeti because that word is far too hard to say. Good idea. Uh, yeah. I tried to help. And, uh, the entity would later... No, I'm not saying that word again. Uh <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a it's a Him- it's a Himalayan yeah, Sasquatch Him- basically. Himalayan Sasquatch, yeah, the, uh, ass yeah, so <laughs> we're talking the area around like Tibet, Nepal, kind of that yeah. kind of area. See, this one's sort more. I was going to say plausible. But plausible is not the word. This one's more obscure because obviously you know nobody lives it, like right up in the Himalayas, so it's just yeah. like fewer accounts. I guess it's kind of like more like yeah. something is up there where not many things live. So yeah. it's like there's yeah, less exactly. um, chances of it being like a bear or something like that. It's just it's less explained, which almost makes it more believable. Mm. Yeah, I mean, from the information though, it seems that it is quite well known in like the Tibetan, mm. you know, culture or it, the folklore. Like it shows up a lot. It's um, uh, Nete is one of the words that they use for it, and there's another one. I'm trying to look for it. The Nito Kangmi, or just the Nito, translates to man bear. So it, it is it is speculated that it is once again just another form of bear, or the uh, apparently endangered uh, Himalayan something or other bear. I don't remember where the fuck is it. <laughs> Tibetan blue bear, I believe, is the endangered one, which will which can walk both upright or on all fours. So it could just be. Oh, it can change, like choose. It can change. <laughs> <laughs> it can morph into two things or four. No. <laughs> I'm just oh, saying, like, it can choose. Like, because obviously, like, bears can stand on their hind legs, but they genuinely don't walk on their hind legs. So I'm saying, can this one just, like, choose to be, like, <laughs> straight chilling on their hind legs? Like, <laughs> Maybe it does. It's, it's just vibing, man. <laughs> He's just like, I'm just walking here, man. He's going for a walk, you know, showing off. Yeah, yeah so ov- obviously Yeti is a, uh indigenous term. Um, yeah. what is, uh, yeah. Tibetan, I believe, but um, the abominable snowman. We d- we d- yeah, the name abominable snowman was coined in 1921, the year Lieutenant Colonel Charles Howard Berry led the 1921 British Mount Everest reconnaissance expedition. I feel like I'm doing a marathon right now, which is <laughs> from the Mount Everest to reconnaissance 1921. In the book, Howard Berry includes an um, an account of crossing the Lakpala at 21,000 feet. Very good. Found footprints that he believed were possibly caused by a large loping grey wolf, which in the soft snow formed double tracks rather like those of a barefooted man. He has his shepherd guides that once volunteered that the tracks must be that of the wild man of the snows, to which they gave the name 
Mito Kangni, Mito translates as man bear, and Kangni translates as snowman. Um, yes, I think they came back mm. from the expedition, and the media kind of um, like ran mi- with it. like mistranslated it. Yeah, mistranslated and, it. And, yeah, um, something or other. I don't know what it was. I didn't write it down. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the game. I'm not um, the research side. I'm so sorry. And this is why we alternate every week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do my part. I mean, yeah. It's not being perfect, but yeah, it it has been possibly known as like a monkey as well, a langur monkey, which is like. I think they're in China or whatever, and like there's these long armed like white monkeys or whatever. They're quite uh, tall. right. They're yeah. the ones that, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that like stand up and then they like walk really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. a gangly tall person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of like that. So it was speculated it could be one of those as well. When you first said monkey, I was like, a monkey? Really? Like these things are supposed to be massive, but yeah, yeah, yeah that makes sense. My chair is like rubbing up against the door and it's just squeaking and it's I really <laughs> annoying me. I didn't accidentally move my microphone that long ago. I don't think I did. I've been kind of pausing. I mean, you'll talking. probably find out. It'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you might be able to hear yourself in my mic, maybe. Right. Just very quiet. About anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I am hosting this. Uh, uh, yeah, w- once again, it was speculated to be a subspecies of the Gigantopithecus, just because, you know, the yeah. Bigfoot and the Yeti seem to be... I mean, cousins. Kind of <laughs> most, most of these, like, yeah, okay. ape creatures are probably bears. Yeah. yeah. Let's be honest. Well, be just bears, bears sick bears. Conditions if yeah. I mean, the or just bears. <laughs> you know? Just bears that they see just like bears. in the distance yeah, so it looks a little bit like... Hill, like maybe yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> but like also, you know, like when sometimes when you take photos and you look really distorted, like maybe they were mm. like, what is that thing? And they tried to take a photo and then they were like, oh, look, it's all like messed up and weird. And it's you're possible. Just like, I mean... You just took a really bad photo. <laughs> I mean, like accounts of yeti encounters like exploded during the 20th century because obviously you know a lot of westerners were coming over to you know explore and there was that whole boom in um you know trying to climb everest yeah and yeah the, and the other um, himalayan mountains but so then, once again you know. you're in a sh- like stressed environment because obviously you know lack of oxygen whatever like you're trying to climb a mountain like you're mm. physically and mentally like uh what's it spent like Oh, you might be seeing things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's highly likely. Yeah. That, like hallucinations when there's like less air. Yeah. And not, and not even that, just like um, mirages formed by, um, you know, light reflecting off the mm. snow. Yeah, because that you, kind of thing. You're looking at like uh, what the fuck's it called? Like a silhouette or something. Yeah. yeah. It's probably yeah. more likely you're gonna form a mirage. Yeah. That. Weird rock formations. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like. If it's snowing like hard out and you just see some like rocks in the distance, it's just like, <gasps> what is that? But it's probably bears. <laughs> <laughs> but, Sorry, but it's both, probably. Both looked at me and I kind of panicked for a second. I'm like, am I supposed to say something? Now? We're waiting oh. for the next bit of information. <laughs> We're ready to absorb. But yeah, no, it's probably like bears. Yeah, it's it's most just stuff like that. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we we get it. We're getting pretty close to time. So how about we move on to. What I think is the most interesting one interesting. of the bunch. Is this I, I the last one? The, the last one? Yeah, yes. Yeah, I did. yeah, so the, the last <laughs> one is um, Mothman. Mothman! Mothman, yeah. he's, he's an interesting... I love heard, Mothman. Yeah, see, okay, I've heard of like Mothman like so many times, but I've never looked into it. Is it like is it exactly what it Mothman. sounds like? Um, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's, uh, From what it seems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like a, like a, a bipedal moth-like creature, yeah, so, kind of. Um, so someone was just bitten by a moth and like uh, went through a whole Spider-Man thing. And I mean, here's a here's like a, a um, artist's impression of okay. the Mothman. Okay, terrifying image. Yeah, that looks like some sort of demon. Uh, like yeah, it looks but, like a um, fly. Like wait, the fly. Like how he start <laughs> how he starts morphing. Oh, like like Jeff Jeff Goldblum yeah. fly. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. with moths. <laughs> But yeah, um, but yeah, like unlike all of the others that we've talked about today, Mothman is actually a benevolent creature. A what? Yeah, I, I have noticed that I'm he's sorry. good. He well, oh, okay. He's not bad. He's good. He, oh. he kind of just chills out in this like one location. He's like, yeah, I'm here. Yeah, but he do, he, do, he does have a specific purpose. He does. Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll just read out. The You're the one who did the research. Jeez. Shut up. You do more than me. You, you get into the nitty gritty. I'm just here hell yeah. The basic shit. Yeah. Um, That's where the interesting stuff is, though. In West Virginia... Born and raised. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. So again, we're back, we're, <laughs> we're back in West Virginia, baby. The Mothman 
is a creature <laughs> reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from November 15th, 1966 to December 15th, 1967. So a period of about a year, give yeah, or take. Yeah. But the first newspaper report was published to the Point Pleasant Registrar, Register, dated November 16th, 1966, titled Couple See Man Sized Bird Creature Something. <laughs> National press soon picked up the reports and helped spread the story across the United States. Um, nah, 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 nah. Uh, the Mothman was introduced to a wider audience by Gray Barker in 1970 and was later popularized by John Keel in his 1975 book, The Mothman Prophecies, claiming that there are supernatural events related to the sightings and a connection to the collapse of the Silver Bridge. <laughs> so there is like a <laughs> mythology that people Sorry. formed around this thing. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I was reading ahead in this article. <laughs> so um early, earlier this year back in june um this year being the dumpster fire that is 2020 um there was a there was a petition to replace all the confederate statues in the united states with statues of mothman <laughs> what? i didn't see this and it got over 2000 signatures oh, damn yeah. <laughs> right, that'd be terrifying you scare children with that. wait so did i, I love it did I miss something? So, wait, how did Mothman Ugh. come about? Like, uh, there, there's really only there's not many sightings. Or people claim they've sighted. There's like, so people claim yeah. they've just a lot, seen a, a man. Lot of like, the sightings haven't been accredited to a person with actual identity. They're just people like, yeah, we saw it. And it's like, well, they didn't actually like file an official report or anything. But um, on no- November fifteenth, nineteen sixty six. Two young couples from Point Pleasant, Roger and Linda Scarberry and Stephen Mary Millett, told police that they saw a large grey creature whose eyes glows red when the car's, uh, car's headlights picked it up. They described it as a large flying man with ten-foot wings, following their car while they were driving in an area outside of town known as the TNT area. I don't know why they're the TNT area. It doesn't sound good. The site of a former <laughs> World War II munition plant. Well, that would explain the TNT. And then... The next few days, other people reported similar sightings. Two volunteer firemen who saw it said it was a large bird with red eyes. Mason County Sheriff George Johnson, fuck, that's quite a title, <laughs> commented that he <laughs> believed the sightings were due to an unusually large heron he termed as a... Shite poke. Shite poke. <laughs> I don't know if like shitty poke. Or <laughs> no, shite it's, poke. it's a shite poke. <laughs> yeah, so... What uh, a name. Jeez. Yeah, it's... So, so it, it's, it's, it seems to be like these people are seeing birds... Like big, big birds. Yeah. So uh, it was said that it was like a, it was like a crane, some form of crane that wasn't native to the area. Yeah, there was. I, I looked up a picture <laughs> of the crane. I'm like, I don't know how you. It's just a bird. Yeah. It's like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a big bird, but it's just a bird. I mean, if it stood up on its hind legs, wait, <laughs> its legs, <laughs> very tall. <laughs> I was like. Birds don't really have four legs. <laughs> they just have two legs and wings. Um, yeah. Well, they. Like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, seven, seven foot. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this here. Yeah, and there was a uh, this was a biologist. His name was uh, Robert L. Smith um, from West Virginia University, and yeah, he reckoned that it was a sandhill crane. Like from yeah, from all the descriptions yeah. that came about, which um, uh, is not like native to the area, but he reckoned that it like wandered out of its migration route. See, it does kind of seem similar. Because you see it on the ground, it's just like this <laughs> small bird, you know. Oh, not small, but it's reasonably sized. Yeah. Uh, but, like, even if it stood up taller and had its wings out, I don't see how you could mistake that because they made it seem like Mothman, or it was believed to be, was, like, walking around on the ground whilst having his wings, you know, out, I well, guess. Yeah, because that's the thing. Birds and always tuck their like wings in, whereas this seems like it's something that's but, walking but around. The crane like. does have like red markings around its eyes, which could be attributed to the glowing red eyes. Yeah. That he is said to have. Mm. So, so it's like, yeah. ah, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it because the crane doesn't look like you could mistake it for a, a what a ten foot man was it? <laughs> I mean, I suppose <laughs> if, it's, if it's in the dark and you can't see it very well, and it's got you know its eyes are shining back at you, and it's got massive wings, you know. Massive wings. Are could, legs. <laughs> yeah, I, I I think I think we can we can forgive some of these folks for you know uh, thinking they saw something that they didn't see. Yeah. So why is this your favorite one? Mothman's just cool, man. Because it's because it's just, like the idea of it is just so weird. And there's uh, there was an incident um, in December '67 
which was like around when the sighting stopped. Like I think I think the last sighting was yeah. Uh, so the last sighting was right before this. Um, there was a suspension bridge in Point Pleasant called the Silver Bridge, mm-hmm. and it collapsed. Like the the, the, br- the bridge collapsed, um, and uh, uh, forty six people died. Did you say for four to six or forty six? Forty six. Oh, yep, yep. Yes, okay. four Large six. Number. Yeah, um, yeah. The uh, basically it was like not constructed properly, and uh, it was it was rush hour traffic at the time, and there was basically just too much weight on it, mm. and um, the way that it was built, um, the so uh, there's a. There's a uh, thing that happens to bridges. Um, mm. It's a like a, we covered this in physics class years ago. Um, but Wind. basically, wind moving past an object will cause it to uh, like sway. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. And the way that this bridge was built, it didn't have any give. Yeah. It, yeah. It wasn't built oh, properly, it and it like it like really amplified it. Yeah, it amplified right. the movement and caused cracks, and then. Basically, on this day, there was so much traffic on it that these cracks just, like, broke. Yeah, yeah and, and, and the bridge collapsed. I could be entirely wrong about that, but that's that's what I understand of how it happened. So you're um, trying to say that Mothman caused the wind and just broke the bridge? No. Yeah, I was no. about to say, what's no. the... Completely, oh, completely the opposite. Because you said benevolent, and I'm like, yes. on, 46 people still died. <laughs> okay, so, so there, was a, um, there, was, there was a book... Released in 1975, called the Mothman Prophecies. It was written by a guy named John Keel. Um, uh, he also wrote he also wrote a previous book in 1970 called Operation Trojan Horse, and he postulated that the Mothman sighting, I, th- I think it was the day before the bridge collapse, was Mothman attempting to warn people about the bridge because it was like right next to the bridge. How, I think. I mean, yeah. How would you like? <laughs> Then. Unless he yeah, just straight up went Mothman up to them and was like, yo. And he's like, I will be near this bridge. Now you're supposed to assume something <laughs> bad's going to happen. Maybe you're trying to keep people away, but people are like, ah. <laughs> If he's a man, he could have just been like, yo, don't he's take like, this bridge tomorrow. Fuck off this bridge, my dudes. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. And he, like, this book uh, connects Mothman with some, uh, I think some UFO sightings that happened around the same time in the same area. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Bleh. Well, but it's it's specific just to this town, which is unusual. Because a lot of cryptids, they seem to be like all over the fucking place. <laughs> like, they, they yeah. Around. Well, I'm pr- I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that since then there have been um, Mothman sightings in other places, but I, th- I think they've been pretty quickly explained away. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. But yeah, it just he also lives there. <laughs> yeah, just like Mothman is just so weird. So West Virginia is like the Gotham City. <laughs> <to> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually a pretty good way of thinking about it. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Very odd. No, but they, oh, they also, dear. the town, they have a festival about them as well. Just because the cryptid is that well known in the town. Oh. Whatever. Is it like a really yes. small town? Uh, they do. Uh, decently small. Let's see, Point Pleasant uh, in... Uh, in the 2010 census, the population was 4,350. Oh, yeah. 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 So, like, matter, yeah. matter where I grew up, that still had 7,000 people. Yeah. So, pretty, it's pretty very small. small. <laughs> Little small. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, um, that's all Final that's thoughts. All the, the cryptids I brought, because I knew we would... I, I skipped over yeah. quite a lot of information, because <laughs> there was so much, and I didn't really want to... Get too far into the details. Yeah. Get it's lost before we go to the next. <laughs> yeah, thing. it's more fun yeah. just shit talking about it too because like when you like I do like it, the information, but then it also can get like you can go down rabbit holes mm. of rabbit holes of rabbit holes, man. Like yeah. So um yeah, just going back to Mothman quickly. Um, they held their f- uh, Point Pleasant had its first annual Mothman festival in two thousand two, and the following year they unveiled a twelve foot metallic statue, uh, yeah. created by sculptor Bob Roach. That's bigger than Mothman. Yeah. Though. Well, the uh, they reckon the the average attendance for the festival is around ten to twelve thousand people a year. Damn. <laughs> yeah. The population's only four. <laughs> also, also, <laughs> the, the Mothman Museum and Research Center was opened in two thousand five. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you know, you know, you know how Roswell um, has like built its entire economy around alien tourism. Yeah, yeah. Point Pleasant has built has basically built its entire economy around Mothman tourism. <laughs> Dude, that's I so mean, good. I feel like that's just as um, legitimate as someone being like, "Yeah, it's Santa." <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, this is ridiculous. The festival is held on the third weekend of every September, hosting guest speakers, vendor exhibits, pancake eating contests, and hayride tours of locally notable areas. <laughs> I'm sorry, what guest speaker is coming to be like, yeah, must man? <laughs> Good old Barack. I, I think I think Mothman hits it somewhere to me as well. <laughs> I would, this may be me I would like to award Muffman the Presidential Medal of Freedom <laughs> for, for his attempts to warn the people of Point Pleasant of this horrible disaster. I think there was a Scooby Doo episode about Muffman. I'm like 80% sure it's a Scooby Doo yeah. episode. I'm like, fuck yeah, Muffman, man. Sick. You, uh, you know that John Keel was invited to speak at the oh, Muffman obviously, Festival. Obviously. Like, <laughs> he'd be the main speaker. Uh, <laughs> the probably, probably Richard Gere as well. Uh, for, the, for those who are unaware, Richard Gere starred in a 2002 film based on Keel's book, also called The Mothman Prophecies. Damn. Yeah. What a, t- what a fact to follow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That's, that's pretty much it, isn't it, yeah. for your research? Yeah. Really there. There's so many I think so. more cryptids, but... Probably. These are the main ones, the, the most yeah. important. Uh, I mean, yeah. We, we left out Nessie. And I think there's a few others that are kind of popular. Not that I can think off the top of my head, but mm. yeah. Nessie would be the other big one that I left out. Yeah. Could have swapped out from Mongol and Deathwing, but we would have run out of time, so. Yeah, probably. Uh, we'd we'd yeah. end up with another two part series. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, maybe. Yeah. Cool. So before we finish, um, I just have a couple of things <laughs> to just to add on to the end. Um, a callback to our two-part series on Ted Bundy. Um, so if, if you are not aware, um, the, yeah, the, the, the Bundy, the Bundy episode is two episodes. Um, I know it looks on YouTube from the thumbnail and everything that it's like a repost, but it is actually part two of that episode. So please go and watch that if you it skipped over it. part two like right at the end, which is not very good. Yeah. And we're, we're going to be like, w- when we do multiple part um, episodes, we will be like, doing them in a better way so it's more obvious yeah we're learning if, if, I'm, rem- yeah. if I'm reminded to do so yeah <laughs> and you will be <laughs> Connell has now taken over the great uh, honour of now being editor of the podcast yeah because yes. my laptop can't great handle fun. it great yes fun. love that so also, he now uploads yeah. everything. So if it, if the, you know you have any <laughs> suggestions for title improvements and things like that <laughs> let him know just you know give him shit down in those Definitely. comments <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so something that I completely skipped over um, uh, in, in that episode, because we were running out of time and exhausted by the end of it, Yeah. because um, we, we recorded like three episodes in one day, mm. which was ridiculous, um, but I completely skipped over the fact that uh, Carol Boone, Bundy's wife, who he married during during his trial, yeah, yeah, yeah um, she had a kid. She had a daughter. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Ted, Ted, but Ted Bundy had a kid. Yeah, um, uh, she was con- she was conceived while he was in prison. Um, uh, remember, he was incarcerated at Rayford Prison for about nine years after he was um, sentenced to death. Yeah. Um, yeah, took it took it that long to get into the chair. Um, but uh, they the prison didn't allow conjugal visits, but the uh, the inmates would. Uh, and that, it wasn't just Bundy they did this for. Like they would d- do it. They they must have had like a a um like a rotation that they went through. But they would pull their money to bribe the guards to allow allow them to have um co- like conjugal visits. Damn. With people, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. No. Uh, you won't you won't be able to find this child. Um, no. no she she. Yeah, as far as far as far as far as I'm aware, she changed her name and like disowned everything to do with them. And, yeah, like with yeah. I mean, Bundy a, yeah, and her mother. And, yeah, yeah, she does like. Yeah, I, I I actually did a bit of research trying to find her. Yeah, um, and yes, yeah, she, yeah, she's 
like completely Ghost, off the grid. Yeah. You would not be able to find her if you tried. You'd have to do that. Yeah, because who the fuck wants to be known Ted as daughter, yeah. Ted Bundy's child? Yeah. She's like, I like, I wouldn't judge, but like, I, I would imagine that's that's a lot of. Uh, I still feel sorry for the guy who adopted Ted anyway, because <laughs> yeah. Bundy wasn't yeah. Ted's original last name. Good old, uh, good old, what's his name? I've already forgotten. Yeah. Good old Johnny, man. Good Hoffman. old Johnny Culpepper Bundy. Yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. He seemed like a nice guy. Yeah. Um, right. Yes. Want to wrap and it up for us? Oh, wait, also, no. Also, yeah. yeah, yeah uh, the other thing, um, I, m- I might actually make this next week's episode. Because... Mm-hmm. Um, it is your week next week. Yes. Yes, it is. Um, and it's one of the <laughs> one of the topics that I wanted to cover. Because um, if you if you remember back to the start of the... Uh, Bundy episode, or maybe it was the serial killer episode. Yeah. Um, I was originally planning on doing both of those and cu- and a overview on two other serial killers in the same episode. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, we stretched out half an episode's content into three episodes. So I severely underestimated my uh, my research. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, I um, was going to cover the zodiac killer oh yeah um oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The big boys. yes and something uh amazing happened this just this past week uh oh, yes i've seen this yeah okay, well, uh, today uh, today, today is don't uh, share anything about it <laughs> yeah uh, today <laughs> is for posterity december 13th 2020 um this week uh one of the zodiacs uh encoded letters that he sent to police they solved it after forty-one years, damn. No, don't, don't, don't. Nah, nah. We'll save it for next week's episode. We'll talk about this <laughs> right. next week. Okay. Cool. Um, <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Sounds yeah, good. Th- yeah. That's. Um, done here? No? Yep. Yep. You still going? <laughs> yep. Okay. No, look, I, j- I just thought that was worth mentioning because that yeah. is insane. This is like one of the biggest, sh- like, one mysteries. of the biggest mysteries in criminology. Yeah. And they solved it. Finally. Took yes. Them long okay. Enough. And we will go. Over, we will talk all about that. Next, Next week. week, when so we cover to to. Ted Cruz, the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that it's. I still love it. Though. I would. Ted Cruz I still would not be surprised. <laughs> Are you aware of his Ted Cruz? Oh, no, probably not. I mean, uh, uh, that next week. <laughs> you'll find out who Ted Cruz is. Yes. <laughs> All right. Want to end us off there? Yeah, All right. I mean, yeah, you can find our other videos on YouTube. I guess you'll find them. Probably. Yes, and we're 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 working on uh, getting them to Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. Oh, yeah, stuff. don't even don't even talk to us about Spotify. Spotify it's a whole process. So. <laughs> we're, we're we're working on it, but it, it could bad. be a while. Yes, still like subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Yes, yeah, all yeah. that good stuff. Comment. What do you what do you want us to talk about? Yeah, as as you can tell, we already have so many podcasts that we want to do. Um, oh, I have so many ideas. But obviously, we only film once a week. We could film every day if we really wanted to, but <laughs> at the moment, it's a bit much. So, yeah, yeah. It really is. Don't have the energy for that. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no time, yeah, energy, after motivation. Out the serial killer episodes. Oh. Yeah, that was uh, hopefully an outlier. <laughs> oh yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Hope so. Better watch yourself now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All, right, All right, catch you guys. Bye. Later.